What's up, traders? Anthony Crudelli here, and thank you for tuning in to the Futures Radio Show podcast. Today, I am thrilled to have Stephen Goldstein join me. He's a trading performance coach, co-host of the Alpha Mind podcast, and author of the newly published book, Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. In this episode, we'll discuss how ego manifests in trading and why it can be the leading cause of self-sabotage. We'll also dive into the importance of remaining present in high-pressure situations and why the ability to let go is one of the elements that separates successful traders from the rest. Stephen will share strategies and techniques on how to address the most common psychological pitfalls and how to harness your inner self to elevate your trading game. Stay tuned until the end of the episode, where we'll announce the three lucky winners of Stephen's new book, Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. Let's get started. Today's podcast is sponsored by EdgeClear. Futures Radio Show listeners can now trade at EdgeClear for a low introductory rate of 59 cents for most futures products and 20 cents for micro products and event contracts. Fun with as little as $100. And pair this with Sierra Charts Teton order routing to receive one of the lowest all-in fees in the industry. This is for new EdgeClear members only. Check it out at edgeclear.com slash deli. That's edgeclear.com slash deli. Steven, welcome back to the show, my friend. It's great to be back. Good to see you. Great to see you. I'm very excited for your book. I'm very happy that you wrote this book, The Mental Game of Trading. And before we even get into it today, I, I want to lead off with a question that I think really will set the tone for our discussion today. And I think it's something that's really debated a lot when it comes to traders. And it's really that percent of your trading success what percentage of your trading success would you say is technical or fundamental versus psychological? For, for me personally? Well, I would um, say not only necessarily for you personally, but I would say in general, for the day it's not, trader. It's a fascinating question. I think the technical and the fundamental aspects take you towards the trade. And then if they're part of a system or a method or a, a playbook that's quite systematic, then the fundamentals should guide you through. But from the moment you come to execute or just before then, the psychology, the performance anxiety kicks in. Um, so, so I think the entire process pretty much of the trade is, is psychological. It's you trying to stay on the plan of the trade, it's you trying to execute in line with the trade. You know, it's a, it's a little bit like a, a singer or a sports person. They, they've done, you know, they've learned all the notes where they've been through all the practice and all what they're going to do. And then, you know, I think Mike Tyson said it best, you know, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the face. And that's the moment that you actually put the trade on. At that point, you're pretty much welcoming getting punched in the face. So that's psychological. I agree with you. And I think that if you're a trader that's out there clicking buttons, you have to get to a point where you have edge, right? You have a technical or fundamental edge. You have a process. That's really that first part of it. But if trading, if successful trading were purely objective and technical, obviously it would be a lot easier, right, Stephen? But what we know it's not because of all the things you just mentioned. And the mental component is so extremely important. And often our internal battles, that's what makes things so much harder. And that's really one of the things I wanna focus on a lot today is, and that's just ego, right? Because that moment of getting in, that, of wanting to perform well in the trade, not necessarily accepting the outcome before it even gets there. And then once you get into a trade, if it's going your way or if it's not going your way, it can lead us in different directions. Let's talk about some examples of how ego shows up in trading. And why I believe it's one of the leading causes of traders to have self sabotage. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it shows up in many ways. You know, I took the ego a lot in the book. I slightly differ from some views about it. It's not always a negative thing. There is this concept of the ego as the enemy. But, you know, we can't function without an ego. And an ego drives and motivates us to succeed as well. It pushes us on. I mean, we couldn't take risks without an ego. So for me, it's a lot of what I do in the book is, is helping people understand 
how they interact with their ego and how that impacts them in their trading and how that does cause so many problems when they don't have a good relationship with their ego or when when they allow the ego to overwhelm their process so for me a process needs to be there to help them achieve their ego aims but equally they mustn't allow their ego to come into their process and corrupt it and that's where the problems happen ego is is this element of us that we can't lose it's it's too much part of us okay but it, it doesn't work in the same way we want or in the way we think or the way we understand and you know the, the ego wants to take us in a direction that requires us to get the approval of others or to look good and then to do that we need to have the approval of ourselves, and we need to feel good and then what the ego does is is when we see this you know this volatility that is part of the way markets perform this uncertainty where your trades sometimes they work out sometimes they don't and that's just part of a system but when when they don't work out our ego kind of it makes us feel bad and it changes our behaviors and it changes our process or when it doesn't even work out the way we want or when we so want it to work out the ego takes over and takes us out of process to do even more enabling us to get maybe put too much size on or, or be overconfident so it's a it's a really complex situation but because of that thing where it tries to take us off process or it does take us off process that's where the sabotage comes in that's where we say you know why didn't i follow my plan or why didn't I put the plan on in the same way I was going to do it? Or why did I override that stop? You know, why didn't I wait for the stop to be triggered? You know, all these things where we look back and we say, why didn't I? OK, the I was was because the I interfered, the ego interfered. You know, how did I get in my own way? My own way. That's the ego getting in. It's part of us. Hopefully I'm not overcomplicating it, but I, I don't no, know if no, that no. sort of sense of where it is and i think we all know ways that the ego corrupts our trading i was just say i could have written the book on that on my trading but i did actually <laughs> yeah we're talking about the mastering the mental game of trading and i want to talk about i think two specific instances that i i think most of us can really relate to when it comes to trading psychology and that is learning how to lose accepting mm -hmm. loss Mm -hmm. Right. But I think there's also the, the element of learning how to win and taking advantage of the market. Right. There's because we're always going to try when we're losing to force that opposite side in, like to try and impose our will. We'll, maybe we'll call it where we try to force that into a win and it doesn't happen. And I think that's maybe where maybe we'll start off with talking about learning how to lose first, because that's where the I comes in and where, you know, I try to make something happen. I think we all have processes that come into place. And when things don't go our way, we're not willing to accept the loss. We're not willing to accept the market's not, it is, doesn't really respect our idea at this moment. And so then the I comes into play. So maybe we just start there in the willing or the ability to accept loss ultimately if you were to stand back and imagine the track record of a process that has a positive expectancy so let's just assume that someone's process trading process has a positive expectancy which is what you need to win you know if you don't have that you know if your method or system doesn't produce that and we have no way of knowing with certainty whether that's the case but let's just say you've you've gone back and you've put 30 years of track record with a system it's done really well it's really good it's a manual system it's not something you can fully automate and let's just say it's up to you to execute that system what is that p l track record going to look like over time okay do a walkthrough it's going to be up it's going to be down it's going to have winning months it's going to have losing months okay it's going to have maybe some larger drawdowns but generally it's going to move up it's going to move up from bottom left to top right if it repeats the previous 30 years. The trouble is that as we live those periods where it doesn't work, where it doesn't produce, where it has drawdowns, or maybe it has long periods of sideways to draw down, which is just what's expected, we can't take that. We get upset by it. Okay, our ego doesn't like it. There's this whole concept of loss aversion, which is this kind of brainchild in the sense of Daniel Kahneman, where he said, we feel the pain of a loss twice as much as we feel the joy of a gain. So if we keep having these negative feelings, that's going to bring our ego in, which it doesn't like negative feelings, and it's going to try and take control. 
And the ego yeah. is never a good trader. Okay. <laughs> it's not. It, it sucks at trading. You can imagine the worst trader in the world. It's your ego. So you don't want that with his hands on the wheel. So what do you do in that instance when the ego takes over? I think that's the part of the accepting the loss situation. I mean, I'm glad you pointed this out. The traders that if you want back 30 years and see a process that potentially in the next 30 years can provide results, then obviously I think for that person, it's easier for them to get in the mindset of allowing loss. But you're going to be probably talking to and having a lot of traders that are new to trading, reading this book. And I think that there's a lot of traders out there. I mean, especially the COVID era, how many new people have brought into the industry and they don't necessarily know what that looks like in terms from the left to right, in terms of their, their strategy. They may have made some money that they, they may have had some success, but now you get into a, this drawdown periods where I think a lot of people are probably you know, really struggling to figure out what, what does the strategy even work at all, right? And so how do you get to the point, let's just say for a newer trader, mentally to like maybe try to put some of that ego aside and at least last longer. I think is one of the things that happens is they end up, we talked about self-sabotage, right? I know from my own personal experience, I end up blowing up accounts just because it's like a cry for help. Because you're just like, I just want out. Just, just blow this account. I'm done with it. I mean, that's what I did early in my career because at some point you're just so frustrated of it. And little did I know I had a winning strategy over periods of time, but the drawdowns were so hard for me to deal with because of my ego. And so I think maybe we focus in on that person and like, how are there, how do they deal with that? Well, you know, I think in a way you're doing that thing where you just want the pain to end. So you literally, yeah. I'm just going to blow the whole lot. And maybe it works out and maybe I make it all back. Okay. Exactly but you you just want it to end so you're like screw it okay if i could take a step back because you know i have this idea this concept of learn to love your losses i think i talked about that in one of our previous recordings where it was a big career change for me when i came to adopt that term you know my performance which had been quite spiky kind of went on a big 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 positive run for quite a few years and it was really me coming to that of learning to love your losses. Now, now you know, it's no secret Tom Hogarth's book has been such a great bestseller over the last year. Best Loser Wins is the title. How to Lose Well Effectively. I don't know if you've heard The Phantom of the Pits. Art Simpson wrote a book quite a few years, and I talk about, talk about that in the book. And that's kind of where the best loser wins comes from. You know, learning to lose well is the art of trading. But if, if we take that step back... The biggest problem is that we don't really understand what trading is. People don't. They go to it with this kind of concept or belief that they're going to make a lot of money. They just need to find a system. They just need to put that system to work. And then, boom, in comes the money. You know, ka -ching. No one really goes into it with their eyes open. I never, you know. No one I know did. There's no courses in how to do it. It's almost like, okay, if you're going to climb Mount Everest, which is what trading is, you're going to learn everything about climbing. You're going to learn everything about safety. You're going to learn everything about acclimatization, oxygen. You know, you're going to be working with guides who are going to make sure that you go through and do it properly. And they're going to tell you, if it's not safe, we can't go up there. Okay. Now, trading is, I use, a meta, I use an analogy, a phrase. You know, it's not the markets we conquer, it's ourselves. But you have to understand what the job is. In order to do that, what trading is, what risk is, what uncertainty is, how markets work, you know, what you need to do, what performance looks like, you know, that it's not a straight line up. It could be easily a year of downwards to sideways. I can't show you it now, but I've got a spreadsheet where I show my clients when I'm coaching them that is a simulation of 10 years of performance in a system with positive expectancy. OK, and it's based on a, a, a random number generator I used with a method that had a positive expectancy attached to it to produce this this line but there's periods in that right where it goes down almost in a straight line for a year or at least it, it heads lower but ultimately it moves up over 10 years but you've got to learn to understand that that is the nature of markets that's the nature of trading it's the nature of the job but you actually make it worse at that point when it starts to go against you by trying harder to get it going right, you then go outside your process. You then go outside the system. Okay, and it's a system that delivers. It's the process that delivers. And that's the screw up that we have in our heads. So it's it's starting from the right point, right? It's so, so I guess what you're saying is the best thing for these newer traders to do is, is to wrap their head around 
ultimately what trading is, right? That's that's what will help us deal with it in the moment. That will help us become more present. Yeah, I mean, it, listen, it, it's an incredibly hard thing to do. And we know the success rate of, you know, traders still being around after five years, let alone 10 years, is it, so incredibly low. So what we're saying is that, you know, the, the odds of success of anyone is incredibly low outside of luck. Okay. But, you know, so many people do it and some succeed and those numbers are big when you think that there's millions doing it. So whilst it's got a low success rate, many do succeed. You want to give yourself the best chance possible. You want to be in that, you know, in that small percentage that do succeed and that build a sustainable career. So it helps if you understand it. You know, if you understand, you know, not just a system, but what's going to happen to you when you're doing it, what the process is, um, what resources you need, how you can survive those down periods. For a lot of retail traders, I talk about having maybe an alternative income to start with in those early years, at least some sort of large sum that's much larger than their trading capital that they could live off, or a, a husband, wife or partner who's earning a lot of money and willing to support them through that or any number of other endowments that can make sure that they, you know, during those periods that they can stay on process. Yeah. It reminds me of some things that I see all the time. I say them on Twitter and I say them to myself all the time. Everything works. Sometimes nothing works all the time. That helps slow me down during the times where things aren't working. It's a simple concept, but it goes back to your point of like getting myself in the right mindset before I sit down. And also people ask me a lot, you know, what was one thing that I would tell myself at a younger age or right when I started trading? And as I always say, if you think longer term, your short term results will get better because it helps us be more present in that moment. In the short term, all we want is results and our mind gets fixated on that. And I think that's where a lot of these traders are making those mistakes. And that bring, kind of brings me to the next thing I want to talk about with you. And, and that's really just being present because the things that you're talking about, the things that I know that I've thought about as a trader, remaining present. I've, I've said a lot that this is an in the moment business. You have to be present in that moment. And our minds stray on these past trades. People have the hopes for future riches. And we find ourselves in another time and place instead of focusing on the trade at hand because everybody wants that positive outcome, right? And we talked about how the ego steps in there, the I. How do you define being present in the context of trading? And why do you believe that that is so crucial for success as a trader? Okay, well, first of all, presence, the ability to be present and to be focused on what you're doing and what you need to do and what you have to do to succeed is, is crucial in any activity, any high performance activity, of which trading is one of them. And I talk a lot about presence in the book. I, I have this uh, phrase called the three P's of high performance, purpose, process, and present. Presence. So one is your purpose, you know, knowing what you're doing, what, what the purpose of what you're doing, and then having a way that you're going to achieve what you do, which is really a playbook of some sort, a system or a method or a set of playbooks. So once you've got, you, you know, your purpose and you've got clarity on it, then you have to have a process which enables that to happen which is a process for you, for finding value, finding ideas, and then being able to execute them and monetize them whilst constantly managing yourself to remain as present as possible to the process and the purpose. So that, that's what I mean about those three Ps. I use an example from a brilliant quote from the Netflix documentary, The Last Dance, which was by the sports writer, Mark Fancil. And he was talking about Michael Jordan in this particular quote. And I'll just read out the quote to you. His gift was not that he could jump high, run fast, shoot a basketball. His gift was that he was completely present. And that was the separator. He didn't allow what he couldn't control to get inside his head. He would say, why would I think about missing a shot I haven't taken yet? And that is complete presence. And that was what made Jordan so great. And that's the same in trading. You know, if we sit there and we have a great idea, a great view, a great signal, and at the point of taking it, we just don't. Fear, ego, whatever, worried about it not working. So we decide to just hold back a little bit. Maybe just wait a little bit for confirmation or something. Let's see if it starts going that way. Of course, by then it's gone, it's lost. Okay. 
You weren't present to what you needed to do. You became absent. You started focusing on your ego need, which is to be really right, not just right. Not follow the process, but you wanted to be certain you were going to be right. If you're going to be certain, you weren't going to fail. The trade was lost in that moment. So it's the same thing as what he was talking about with Michael Jordan. And we see it with all the great sports people, all the great artists, all the great musicians, is to be present to what they need to do in the moment. Of course, the problem and one of the challenges is that sport happens in a short window of time. Trading happens all day long, every day. Yeah. Sometimes markets aren't doing much, so we're kind of switching off. Other times markets are like crazy, you know, very easy to be present to it during those times or much easier. So that is part of the, again, the challenge of this insane job, that ability to remain present when you need to be. In a way, that that's what you're aiming for. And that's what process it is. You know, am I sticking to my process? Is the outcome in line with the process? Not is it right? Not did it make money? Did I follow my process? And it's being present to that. And the great traders do it. You see them do it. If you ever work with these guys, you're like, oh, how do they do that? <laughs> they stay present. Yeah, no, I, I love the way that you, you talk about that in the book. And I love this discussion today. And you mentioned Michael Jordan. I mean, for some people that maybe didn't watch Jordan back in those days, think about Tiger Woods these days. Think about Tom Brady. Look at how present they are in every situation. Uh, yeah. Football, you Messi, you know, and look at how focused he is. and in those in those situations yeah when you, it's, it's great because when you read sports biographies and you know of anyone you realize that that's exactly what they were doing or the writers talking about them you could be talking about anyone you know Djokovic for me is one of those guys who's Djokovic, just yeah. prison, you know he is. Yeah. you see it with the golfers as well you know those top golfers you know that they're, they're no less capable technically when they're not winning things but they are just you know, you, you hear every golfer talk about that. So in fact, the lessons for this book, you know, could, could apply to anything in life, sport, life, anywhere, business. You know, I, I work with some salespeople, ironically enough, and exactly the same thing's happening for them as happening, you know, for traders, sell, you know, the, the risk is trying to get the sale done and they become so worked up, it actually becomes counterproductive to the sales process. What are some techniques that can help traders become more present? That's a great question. Again, one of the things in the book is I don't go into that so much, partly because I'm focusing more on understanding these things and exploring them. But the, the final part of the, the performance process cycle, which is the framework that the book is built around, is about letting go. And for me, the ability to be, to be present requires the ability to let go, the ability to let go of your ego, your ego desires, your ego needs, let go of the fear of losing. That's one of them. You know, let, let go of the fear to override your trades because they're all ego aspects. And letting go is the hardest thing to do. We, we talk about it like it's a throwaway phrase. Okay. It's what the greats do better than anyone else. You know, it's, it's with my coaching, having worked with so many great traders, I see that so often as I get to know them and get to understand how they work, we go into the you know the minutiae of what's happening for them you suddenly notice that these guys are extraordinary at letting go or guys or, or ladies you know sort of some incredible female traders out there but these traders are incredible at just being able to process something you know they, they don't not go until they do they lose it but they get back on it so much quicker they don't stay there they let go of the bad outcome they let go of the mistrade and they just focus on what they need to do next. And, and that's the thing is that letting go is so damn hard to do because it is the super skill, great performance. And, and a big part of it is something I talk about often, which people wouldn't think to consider in a conversation about trading, this idea of self-compassion. It is one of the most incredibly powerful things you can do. And that's learning to like yourself. That's learning to give yourself a break. Okay, that's learning not to be so hard on yourself because you're dealing with this crazy volatility in the markets, this, this uncertainty. You know, much as we think we know what's going to happen, we don't. Much as we love an idea or we bought into a story or belief, what the Fed's going to do, what the results are going to be, 
you know, we don't know. And we don't know what the re reaction to them is going to be, even if we think we do. OK, so we, we have to give ourselves a break when something doesn't work out the way it's one. Because if we turn in on ourselves, if we start beating ourselves up, we're undermining ourselves. OK, and that's the ego. The beating up of ourselves is the ego beating us up, you know, saying you're an idiot. You should have done better. What's the matter with you? You're useless. OK, putting you back down. But if you can say, no, give yourself a break. That was tough. That was hard. OK, this job is not easy. You know, don't criticise yourself, but critique what you did. Then you learn as well, because if you criticise it, you just dismiss it. OK, and you don't learn from it. You just repeat it. But if you actually critique it and you go through it and you say, OK, next time I'll do this. Or actually, that was completely in my process. It wasn't a bad trade. You know, it was just one of those that unfortunately the outcome was not what I wanted. It was one of those negative ones that in that 30 years of performance comes along very often. It doesn't mean you've done it wrong or you've failed. It will hurt because you're human. OK, but you've got to let go of that quickly. Move on. Come back to starting again and being present. I want to stay on this let go mindset because you talk about how this is a key separator of high performers versus those that, you know, that don't let go. And mm -hmm. I want to talk about a drawdown because we all go through them. You know, I actually, I'll, I'll talk my, about my own personal trading a little bit right now, as I think maybe it'll bring some context to this. Maybe we talk about that a little bit, because I'm sure everybody can relate to what I'm about to say is, you know, I, I had a scenario where I was reading everything very clearly. Then I was in a trade, I was in a long trade and I got stopped out. All of a sudden I got bearish and I'm talking about from a swing trade perspective. The next thing you know, I look to get short. I get short. The day has a big, one of the biggest rallies of the year. I get stopped out of that. I lose. All of a sudden I feel what we used to call like in the toilet bowl where I had just two days of just like yeah. days where I'm looking at the market and I'm just like, whoa, this is like the beginning of when all of a sudden I start getting really pissed. You know, you could feel it. Like I feel the boiling in me, even though I did everything according to my process and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. And it just literally just did not work. But accepting that in that moment, it, it was funny. I actually got a little bit of back and forth with some people on Twitter because I basically was like, I'm just not seeing it all right now. And I just need to take time off. And everyone's like, it's two days. You know what I mean? Like, is that that big of a deal? But I had to let it go because I felt myself getting to this point. And this is where I kind of maybe wanted to talk with you about emotions as well, where I felt really emotional to that. Like I was pissed you know and i'm thinking to myself if i don't stop kind of right now this is when just the worst things happen i've already lost money but like where do i go from here and the only way for me to do it that i've ever learned is like i, I go and spend money and i remember a veteran trader telling me one time he's like when you're losing go and spend money it's going to be cheaper for you and i'm thinking <laughs> to myself this guy's out of his mind right but you know what i actually went and did it this this weekend I went and spent some money. I did some stuff for myself, but it helped me just separate myself from it because you get so attached. I personally know that I struggle with this to once I have a couple of rough days, even though I, you know, I did exactly what I wanted. I feel connected to that. And, and it's like you have, I don't care how long you've been doing this. You want to make it back. You feel that way. Yeah. And so. I want to talk strategy with you. How, I mean, I do things that maybe, you know, aren't the right things to do to separate myself from it. But, but what do you recommend to the traders that know they get in that moment where they did everything right? They feel like they did everything right. All of a sudden, a drawdown's about to begin. How do you let it go? How do you separate yourself from that? Yeah. Well, first of all, no one's perfect to this. Okay. Yeah. If we was to, you know, I, I use this kind of thing just as a, for a bit of fun where I, when I work with people, I sort of grade them out of 10. And I take them through what letting go is. And I say, you think of the very best traders. You think of the guys who are kings of trading, the Paul Tudor Jones. You know, no one is perfect. Everyone has off days. OK, I, I would say that those greats are probably somewhere no better than seven out of ten at letting go. The really top traders, the guys who are smashing the ball out of the park, they're probably five out of ten. OK, and victory is going to those guys. OK. But for me, nearly everyone else is somewhere around two or three out of 10. It is really hard to do. I was two or three out of 10 for most of my trading, well, about half of my trading career. And then I started to work on this side of myself. OK, and my final sort of 10 years were completely level to my previous what were 13 years. OK, and 
it was that, but it didn't mean that I didn't have losing periods. You know, I probably had my some of my darkest days in those great years. Okay. But then it's actually doing letting go deliberately. What you've done is a great example. You can choose to let go when you have a bad day, which we all we'll get you'll get out of sync with the market. You know, even if we know everything about what the process is and how to do it as well as we can, we still screw up because we're human. Okay. We still have emotions, we still have impulses. The ego would take over at time. But what you're doing there is you've learned to deal with it early in that cycle rather than let it become, you know, five days, 10 days, 15, 20 days, at which point it's a lot more difficult to get over. And you know what? I had a trade, which I think I talked about in the book, actually, which came and missed my best ever year, but it was one of my worst ever trades. It was actually a really good trade. I just executed it so badly and did everything around it so badly that it became a big loser. And then also I missed out a, a, a ton of money that I could have made on it. And I went into a really deep funk, you know, this kind of, you know, sort of in the head, couldn't handle it. And this went on for about a week. And, you know, the only thing I didn't do, or at least I knew to not to do, was not to try and trade in the market during that time. OK, so I was watching the market, it was going further and further and I was getting more and more, you know, sort of fed up with it. But I didn't trade. OK, now by then I've been trading 20 years. So like you, I've got a set of routines, experience, etc. But I still was my head wasn't in the right place. It wasn't in sync with the market. I wasn't trusting myself to put trades on. I wasn't seeing what was clearly in front of me which was that there was still loads of room left in the idea that I had, possibly even more than I'd realised. And it was staring me in the face and I couldn't see it because I wasn't present. That's what I mean about absent and present. Physically, I was there. Mentally, I was completely absent from the job, from the process, from the market. And then something I'd learned to do, journaling is a thing that I'm a big fan of. Um, I don't know if you can see behind me a whole load of my old journals. I pulled my journal out. And after about a week, I just started writing along the lines of, you know, what a loser you are, <laughs> sort of getting my anger out and frustration out. Then I started writing about, you know, what's my process? You know, reminding myself, what do I do right? You know, what makes me good? OK, so I wrote about three, four pages in about five minutes. And then suddenly I got closure. Suddenly I'd let go. Suddenly I looked at the market and I was like, what am I doing? This has got loads of room to get in. Just get back in that long, long bond position. Now I had to find a new level to get in. So I had to work out, you know, the risk reward structure, where I'd be stopped if I'm wrong. All that, I just had to work that out. But I got myself in and that turned out to be one of my best ever trades. And have I stayed in that place out of sync or just absent? OK, I would not have got it on. Or I may, maybe have done a revenge trade, gone the other way, you know, and, and I've certainly done that in the past when it's working my way and I'm not in it. So I go the other way, you know, hey, maybe, maybe if I go the other way, that'll work. I didn't, I stayed out. I got back in sync like you did. And then I started making the money again, a lot of money. That's, I got myself back to being present. The great traders, you know, you watch them. Some I'm amazed at how they do it sometimes, but even they have their moments where they lose it and they do exactly what you did. You know, they step back. I know guys who would go, you know, guys who would trade thousands and lots of futures on the floor, who would go down to trading one lot for a couple of weeks until they got back into sync with the market. That was letting go. That was why they were great. They didn't care about their ego. They didn't care about how they looked to the rest of the world. They knew that they had to get back to syncing with the market. Yeah, I've learned that so many times in my career where you just go back to a one lot and you get your rhythm back. You know, you, yeah. you start feeling good about what you're doing. You start to get in that flow, that better flow of execution. Right. And that leads me to what, what the final thing I want to discuss with you today. At the beginning, I talked about really two things that, you know, everybody goes through that they have to go through from the psychology side of trading. And that's, you know, learning how to lose. But I think also equally as important, at least in my opinion, is learning how to win too. We talked about Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods. We talked about Messi and Djokovic. They accepted their losses in those moments, but those guys also were always, you know, to the point where they always put themselves in a position to win. And mm -hmm. I think that in my career, 
I can relate to the times where it was like I needed to really learn how to lose. And then also there was times I had to learn how to take from the market. I had to learn how yeah. to actually become a winner because you could get so just so beat up in this business where like you, you finally learn how to lose and you're accepting it, but yet you're not winning. Right. And I think that there's something about taking from the market from that perspective too. Talk to us about that. What can we do in those moments to become, get to the level that we want of a high performer by learning how to win as a trader? Again, it's the idea of this presence, this idea of trying to keep yourself separated from the ego during the trade and sticking to your process. Okay, so if you can imagine, you know, again, just a simple system. Let's just say that you you take trades that you think have got a five to one risk reward, let's say. Okay. And you grab your profits at 80% of the move. So you've got a five to one risk reward, but you've made it a four to one risk reward. Okay. And if you aggregate that system over years, four to one doesn't produce profits let's say all it does is cover the losses, okay? Which means you're flatlining, you're never making money. But if you allow it to go to the five to ones, which is what your system has identified, okay? And that's it, it's the ego that wants to grab the profit because it's worried that that's gonna go back to two to one or a, even a break even or maybe even a, a loss cut. That process over 30 years though, that positive expectancy would have had a few of those in it. Some of them would have been almost at profit and then crashed. But some of them that went wrong would have then become ones that went to the profit. You have to understand the process. You have to understand your system. You have to understand where the value comes from it. If you don't and you interrupt it, then because of your ego, you're not present, it's not going to perform. Okay, so learning how to win is as important as learning how to lose. Because otherwise you're just constantly in the middle somewhere. Okay, it, it's... God, it's, I mean, it's so, you know, so in fact, I would go a bit further, okay? You could mitigate all your weaknesses, but that means you'll just fail more slowly, okay? You've got to learn how to leverage what you're strong at, where you're great, how the system works, how the process works. That's the only way you're really going to win, by leaning into that and leveraging that fully. And if you're not, again, it's a math equation. You're not going to make money. Exactly. You talk about learning how to lose and you finally get to that point. I'll, I'll never forget this point in my career where I'm like, wow, I'm actually accepting loss very well. Now I'm healing immediately after a loser. But now I feel like I've only become a good loser, right? I'm not making any money. And then you have to actually learn how to win. I mean, this business, that's why mastering the mental game of trading your book, I think is so important for traders to, to read and go out there and really give themselves an opportunity. I think as a trader, if you really want to be successful, you have to not only know the technical and the fundamentals, you have to understand the importance of the mental game of trading. Stephen, we're about to give away three copies of your book, Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. I know we talked about a few different things today that are discussed in the book. Give us the quick overall of what's in the book and how traders can benefit by getting it and reading it. Okay. Do you mind if I just cut away to a review that someone sent me yesterday that they were about to put on Amazon? And it was someone I knew who's, um, who used to work with me in the early days of, of mine and his trading career. And he still trades today. He's been a very successful over many years. And his review just kind of, for me, he, he kind of got it almost better than I could than I could say it. So if I just go through the way he, he wrote this, he went, I'm in my 31st year as a trader. And he said he had the privilege of trading alongside me, you know, in the past. And he said he's made every mistake you could possibly make in trading. And Unravel would have been owned and self-sabotaged and all of these several times over. He said he also got a bit right, hence, you know, he would have been able to last 31 years and, and live off that. But he said reading that book was like looking into a mirror of my history. Very uncomfortable at times, as all the anecdotes were relatable. So I put a lot of anecdotes in the, in the book. That's what I wanted the book to be. I wanted it to be a mirror to people, okay? I wanted to hold up a mirror so people see themselves in it. Because for me, what really changed my trading and the trajectory of my, of my trading career, and it was, you know, I'd already done 13 years, but I was really struggling and, and not outperforming, was I worked with this coach, brilliant coach, Peter Burdett, who wrote the foreword for the book. And... He asked me many years later, what was it that made the difference? And I said, 
Do you know what you held up a mirror to me, my trading, the way I did it through that coaching process? And I got to see myself for the first time as a trader, how I would have seen if I'd have been watching me. And that is so powerful, that self-awareness that comes from that, that understanding of who you are and what you're doing and how you're doing it. And that's what changed everything because that empowered me to make changes. The coaching didn't make direct changes. It catalyzed me to really look at things, reflect on things, explore how to do it differently. And that's what I want the book to be, a mirror for people. Traders, you got to get this book. It's called Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. Stephen is a trading performance coach. As you can tell from talking to him today, he's got a lot of experience in trading and in coaching. He's also the co-host of the Alpha Mind podcast. Stephen, this was just awesome. Uh, it's always great to speak with you. You're such a great guy. You've done so many great things for the trading industry with your podcast, with your performance coaching, and now with your book. And I'm so excited to give away three copies of your book in just a few moments here. But Stephen, I just wanted to say thank you again so much for coming on the podcast again. It's always a pleasure to speak with you, my friend. It's, it's always great to speak to you as well. Thank you so much. All right, traders, hang tight. We're about, we're about to announce the three winners of Mastering the Mental Game of Trading. Uh, so just hang tight. We'll be right back. Streamline your trading setup with Edge Clear. The forward-thinking broker for active traders. From our unbeatable service with an assigned broker to Edge Pro X, our robust and reliable trading platform, Edge Clear offers more than transparent fees and fair prices. Designed by traders for traders, we combine the best of technology, service, and risk control. Our dedicated brokers are here to help you grow. Join Edge Clear today and elevate your trading business. All right, traders, the winners of Stephen Goldstein's book, Mastering the Mental Game of Trading, are Dave Shanslin, Rayon Markets, and Bryant Tharp. Congratulations, guys, on winning an absolutely fantastic book. And thank you very much to everybody that participated in this very important giveaway. Let's face it, traders, you can never work too hard on mastering the mental game of trading. So much of trading is psychology. I hope you enjoyed today's interview. And that does it for today's show, everybody. See you next time.